I will praise you, Lord, among the nations. I will tell of your name to my kin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you raise the dead to life in the spirit. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you bring pardon and peace to the sinner. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you bring light to those in darkness. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. As we recall year by year the mysteries by which, through the restoration of its original dignity, human nature has received the hope of rising again, we earnestly beseech your mercy, Lord, that what we celebrate in faith, we may possess in unending love. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The high priest rose up and all his companions that is, the party of the Sadducees, and filled with jealousy, laid hands upon the apostles and put them in the public jail. During the night, an angel of the Lord opened the doors of the prison, led them out, and said, Go and take your place in the temple area, and tell the people everything about this life. When they heard this, they went to the temple early in the morning and taught. When the high priest and his companions arrived, they convened the Sanhedrin, the full senate of the children of Israel, and sent to the jail to have them brought in. But the court officers who went did not find them in the prison. So they came back and reported, we found the jail securely locked, and the guards stationed outside the doors. But when we opened them, we found no one inside. When the captain of the temple guard and the chief priests heard this report, they were at a loss about them as to what this would come to. Then someone came in and reported to them, the men whom you put in prison are in the temple area and are teaching the people. Then the captain and the court officers went and brought them, but without force, because they were afraid of being stoned by the people. The word of the Lord. The Lord hears the cry of the poor. The Lord hears the cry of the poor. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall ever be, shall be ever in my mouth. Let my soul glory in the Lord. The lowly will hear me and be glad. The Lord hears the cry of the poor. Glorify the Lord with me. Let us together extol his name. I sought the Lord and he answered me and delivered me from all my fears. The Lord hears the cry of the poor. Look to him that you may be radiant with joy and your faces may not blush with shame. When the poor one called out, the Lord heard, and from all his distress, he saved him. The Lord hears the cry of the poor. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him and delivers them. Taste and see how good the Lord is. Blessed the man who takes refuge in him. The Lord hears the cry of the poor. Alleluia, Alleluia. Alleluia. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, 
that so that everyone who believes in him might have eternal life. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son so that everyone who believes in him might not perish but might have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through him. Whoever believes in him will not be condemned, but whoever does not believe has already been condemned because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the verdict, that the, that the light came into the world, but people preferred darkness to light because, of their work, because their works were evil. For everyone who does wicked things hates the light and does not come toward the light so that his works might not be exposed. But whoever lives the truth comes to the light, so that his works may be clearly seen as done in God. The Gospel of the Lord. Hard to think of much to say about the um, Acts of the Apostles reading because it's just set up for what follows. And I don't want to preview what I'm going to say in tomorrow's Mass so, <laughs> or, or the subsequent ones yet. So um, what we do see in this, though, is a, is a very interesting thing. Um, the disciples are um, committed to following what the Lord Jesus is telling them to do. They are brave in doing this. They allow themselves to be jailed for this. And uh, so there is a, a certain bravery about that. There is a certain uh, something that we can, we can recognize in that their commitment to what the Lord wants them to do no matter what happens to them. And so what do they see as a response from God with regard to this commitment? Well, he sends an angel to them and the angel frees them. So it's affirmation to them that they are doing the right thing. You know, I, wish, I wish at times I had as clear a message from God as to what, what, whether I'm doing the right thing or the wrong thing sometimes. But for them, it's a wonderful sign. And they are able to just go out and to continue preaching as they are directed by the angel to do. So we see at least that in, in this reading. We'll see the response to it later. But for now, we see their dedication and how, how much they have changed from Jesus' suffering and death in that time where they just ran away, didn't want to have anything to do with what was going on, didn't want to get caught up in all of this. Now, they're willing to risk prison. They're willing to risk anything, really, to uh, deliver the message about Jesus and to continue his ministry. So, wonderful thing happening there. The, um, in the gospel today, we have, um, uh, well, of course, that very, very uh, familiar passage, very popular passage, John 3.16, which I read twice. I read it in the uh, gospel acclamation and also in, uh, in the gospel itself. So, um, very, very familiar thing for us. But I think the more important thing to recognize in that, as important as it is to realize that he sent us to save us, he was sent to us to save us and give us eternal life, is this thing that John always does about light and darkness. He has this, this well, I don't want to say a preoccupation with it, but he likes to use this illustration to help drive home his point. He likes to talk about light and darkness. And the way that he talks about light and darkness in this particular passage is this idea that the evil deeds are the dark things and the good things are the things that are in the light. So most of us have sufficient pride, I suppose, self, maybe self-esteem, but we would not want to expose those bad sides of our lives. We would not want them 
to be seen by others, you know, for fear of ridicule or whatever other embarrassment it might cause us. So uh, John recognizes this and recognizes that people prefer that, prefer to hide away their faults, prefer to hide away their sins rather than to bring them into the light. Um, they, he recognizes that and he tries to encourage them, tries to say, well, bring them out into the light so that the Lord can heal them, is effectively, I think, what he's saying. If you want to live in the truth, the truth means everything about you, which is already known by God, but we are given the power over God to hide some of these things. And that power is really misused because it shields God from being able to help us in those particular areas. So we ask for the Lord to give us the strength then to reveal to him those things that we need his help with, to bring his light to them, to bring that goodness to them so that uh, we may be healed and we may be saved, may have eternal life, not have any burdens, anything that's impeding us from entering into that life completely here and uh, in eternity. The, the Lord always looks at us in that way. He, he never looks at us in, with a condemning tone or with, it, with, uh, with that in mind. He's always looking to us to try to help us and to try to save us. So within this celebration of the Eucharist, we'll have this opportunity where we already had the opportunity to turn over our sins to him Let's ask for the Lord to give us that strength through the Eucharist today, uh, whether you receive it um, spiritually through this recording or those of you who are here today uh, uh, who receive it physically. Let's uh, ask the Lord to help us to use that Eucharist to strengthen us and to give us the courage to uh, ask for his assistance with whatever difficulty we find ourselves in. So let's pray. We offer the Mass today um, for uh, the happy repose of the soul of John Ditzler, um, who died, I believe, on March 26th. Uh, we pray that, um, that he be received into the kingdom and that Pat and the rest of the family uh, may receive comfort in this time. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Uh, we pray for Sonia's sister Lucy, who uh, passed away recently, and pray also that she she would be received into the kingdom. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We continue special prayers for T.J. Uh, Cromier, for Monica Matthews, for Sherry Riley, for Anthony, uh, Janet Riley, uh, Pam McRae, and Sandra and Gary Coggins. We pray to the Lord. And we continue our prayers for comfort and healing for Marianne Polly, Joe Lusk, Harry Brooks, Jake, Jerry Brower, Dan Branch, Mary Prock, Jean Marr, Jane Benedetto, Mary Beth Frosco, Iris Campbell, and Peggy Obachowski. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Uh, may governments seek a balance between justice and mercy in their judicial systems. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Um, any other prayers you'd like to offer? Lord, hear our prayer. 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 Lord, 
hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. Father of light, we confess faith in your Son and believe in his saving power. Support us as we strive to live more fully in your light and forgive us for those times we turn back to the darkness. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O God, who by the wonderful exchange effected in this sacrifice have made us partakers of the one supreme Godhead, grant, we pray, that as we have come to know your truth, we may make it ours by a worthy way of life. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. Through him, the children of light rise to eternal life, and the halls of the heavenly kingdom are thrown open to the faithful. For his death is our ransom from death, and in his rising, the life of all has risen. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Peter our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with St. Joan of Arc, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
I have chosen you from the world, says the Lord, and have appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last. Alleluia. Let us pray. Graciously pre be present to your people, we pray, O Lord, and lead those you have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace.